Yeah, to give us uh, an impressive topic and help us to find our own sustainable development by education. And following with great honor, let me well, uh, let us to welcome the speaker, Dr. Yun Pong Zhu, Professor, National Central University. The topic is from green accounting to global warming. Let's welcome Dr. Zhu. Terribly sorry for being late. <laughs> uh, there was a man, another meeting at the National Taiwan University. Uh, my topic today will be uh, from green accounting to global uh, uh, warning. Uh, it will be divided into four parts: SEA, an ideal system of uh, green national product; Taiwan SEA, global warming prevention as a public good, and finally the conclusions. Uh, green national accounting uh, is a system of adjustments of conventional national product measures, such as DTP or GMP, to reflect changes in the value of environmental assets, uh, popularly known as green accounting, gain considerable attention in recent decades. In the United States, uh, intensive work on environmental accounting began in the Bureau of Economic Analysis, or BEA, of the U.S. Department of Commerce in 1992, shortly after the first publication of the U.S. Integrated Environmental and Economic Satellite Accounts. Uh, in 1994, however, Congress directed the Commerce Department to suspend uh, further work in this area and to obtain an external review of environmental uh, accounting. Uh, so a panel was then organized by the U.S. National Research Council and charged to do the work. The findings of the panel were released and published in 1999 uh, in a book called Nature's Numbers, a very well-written book, uh, edited by uh, William uh, Northhouse and Edward uh, Cotton Lambert. There, in the book, the panel concludes that extending the U.S. national income and product counts to include assets and production activities associated with natural resources and the environment is an important goal and that developing a set of comprehensive non-market economic accounts is a high priority for the nation. So it's a very active uh, endorsement of the effort. Uh, and the panel so uh, recommends that the Congress authorizes and fund Bureau of Economic Affairs of the Department of Commerce to recommit recommence its work on de developing natural resources and environmental accounts. We hope this recommendation could soon be implemented. I, I think there's a chance because the, 
the congressman who was opposing this effort. Uh, well, you all know in the United States Congress, uh, if one congressman opposes a certain thing uh, very actively and very vehemently and is willing to exchange for anything else, then it could be blocked. And that's what uh, Representative uh, Malavan from West Virginia has done to the Green County in the United States. Uh, he was representing the mining interest in West Virginia, of course. Uh, fortunately, he was no longer re-elected. So <laughs> in, in 2011, there is a new uh, congressman from that state, uh, Representative McKinney. And we hope that things will change in the future. Elsewhere, the world continue without pause in many countries, including Japan, South Korea, and many Nordic countries. Most nations use United Nations SAIL system. Uh, the law name is System of Integrated Environmental and Economic Counting. This is its latest the cover of the latest edition of the SAIL revision last year. Uh, printed by the United Nations. Well, uh, as I have shown in a paper uh, uh, published in 2007 in the Encyclopedia of Life Support System, uh, it's a book uh, uh, developed uh, by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural organization or UNESCO. Okay. You can find it in the uh, on the website E O L S, which is Encyclopedia of Life Support System. As I argue in that uh, paper that green GDP proper properly measured should reflect the net benefits to the society of reduction in pollution. Okay. Of course, it includes more than the aspect of pollution, but that's an important aspect. Uh, so I use this aspect as the, uh, the main architect of this uh, argument. Well, uh, in other words, green GDP ideally should be uh, a target to be maximized by policymakers in any country because it represents the net benefits, the benefits minus cost of pollution abatement or reduction in pollution. So basically this thick line, the heavy line, is the marginal social benefit, which is the sum of A and B. A is the marginal, quote-unquote, contribution to production. In other words, if producers would be free to pollute, then they will use it to the fullest extent, because it's a byproduct of their production. And there is also the marginal benefits, direct benefits from a cleaner environment. Okay, So these two together constitute uh, uh, the marginal social benefit. And then here, this is the marginal cost of abatement. Okay. I uh, deliberately uh, uh, draw these two lines as straight lines with uh, 45 degree angle. So their, their sum is this uh, flat line here. Uh, the intersection of the marginal cost and the marginal social benefit is the optimal level of reduction in pollution, which maximizes green uh, NDP or GDP. Uh, NDP is more reasonable because NDP is net domestic product. It, it uh, deducts uh, 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 the depletion. Uh, of uh, man-made capital, otherwise known as uh, depreciation allowances. 
So that's the idea system, as I argued in that paper. Now, SEA uh, uh, records uh, green D NDP as this area. In other words, it only considers avoidance costs or abatement costs. And so it would be a special case uh, if the social marginal social benefit is flat. Uh, it doesn't vary with the level of uh, pollution abatement. And if the marginal cost of abatement ha happens to be a, a straight line, uh, uh, then these, the areas of these two uh, a triangle are, are equal. So only in this uh, special case will the green NDP be equal to the green uh, GDP defined by SEA. Okay. So in that words, uh, in other words, the SEA system is not an ideal system. Okay, it's only a special case. Uh, but I think it's still uh, 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 an effort important effort in the right direction because it's, it's very hard to estimate. It's not that hard to estimate the marginal contribution to production, this line, but it's very hard to uh, measure the marginal benefits of the environment because it's public good. So uh, one has to use all different kinds of com uh, uh, computations. So uh, if it's too controversial, then people will throw away the green GDP effort completely. So it's wise for the United Nations to start with uh, more specific uh, uh, calculations of the environmental costs. So I think it's, it, it's a step in the right direction. I think it's still strongly recommended that it should be uh, followed as a first step. Uh, so according to SEA then, uh, the pollution abatement that would maximize green GDP would be minimum pollution. Okay. So that, that's a happy byproduct also of the SEA definition. That means uh, the optimal pollution is always the minimum pollution, which means at no harm to the environment. It can be stored naturally by the environment. Taiwan SEA uh, Taiwan, some, some people say it's a developed country, others say it's still developing countries, but in terms of green environmental accounting, uh, we're more advanced than the advanced countries. <laughs> uh, to my knowledge, we're the only place in the world where the publication of green GDP, green accounting, is formally demanded by our legislature. In spite of many, many bad things about our legislatures, including fist fighting and so on and so forth, <laughs> they did one good thing. I mean, and set a world record. And so, in the year 2000, the first publication of Green Accounting uh, was out. And uh, it has been published annually, ever so. Now this is the result of the latest version of our uh, uh, green GDP for the three years. Uh, this is our regular GDP. Okay, you can see 12 billion, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 12, 13 and 13 plus trillion NT uh, dollars. Okay. One uh, U.S. dollars is about 30 NG dollars. Uh, so, uh, it's about, you know, uh, 4 trillion U.S. dollars. Okay. I'm sorry, uh, 400 billion U.S. dollars. Uh, well, the most important number is this. 0 0.66, 0 0.62, and 0 uh, 50. 0.58 percent of GDP. Okay, that's how the GDP should be adjusted. If uh, environmental quality degradation is 
uh, deducted, and if uh, depletion of uh, natural resources, uh, including groundwater and uh, mining and resources, uh, are deducted. It's not a big number, uh, and it could cre increase in the future because uh, the list is not uh, comprehensive uh, enough. Uh, hopefully there will be more items in the future, uh, and the, this percentage will more accurately reflect what's going on uh, in the economy, but at least uh, we have the numbers, so we can work on that. My third part of the lecture is global warming as a public good, uh, market failure. Okay. Now, this is the demand curve for reduction in carbon emissions from country X. Okay. Well, let's say country X, Y, Z are all of equal size. Let's say. Uh, so. This demand curve is simply twice as large. Okay, so we add up the demand curve. Okay. And this is the marginal cost. Suppose it's flat. Okay. Uh, why is global warming a public good? Well, a public good in, econ in economics is a kind of good which everybody can enjoy. People cannot be excluded from enjoying the product. Uh, then it, it, it's public. And so global warming apparently, or prevention of global warming apparently is a global public good. So we have this game theory uh, framework. This is X or Y, and this is Z, okay? Because they, they, they're all of the equal size, so it, it's, it's symmetric, so it doesn't matter, okay? Now, if both parties join a contract or an agreement, then both will have the net benefit of A plus D. A plus D. Okay. A plus D. Uh, because cost has to be deducted. Uh, if one joins, the other doesn't. Okay. Then the reduction level will be lower. The one who joins bears the entire cost, okay? So its benefit is dramatically reduced from A plus D to only D. The person who doesn't join, its benefit increases from A plus D to A plus D plus C. A plus C plus D. And this is symmetric. Now if neither one joins the net benefit, of course, is zero because there's zero uh, reduction in carbon emissions. Now, the game theory in economics tells us there is no joint by both. It's not a Nash equilibrium. Okay. If, very simple because if you join, then I benefit, I benefit more by not joining the efforts. Okay. Equilibrium, there is no stable equilibrium in this game. Even though joined by both is Pareto optimal. This would be the best for the entire world. But it's not a natural equilibrium. Okay. So, uh, it's, a, it's a typical public good problem. And so my conclusion is, how much time do I have? Still have. You have 40 minutes. Okay. okay. How much more? Uh, you have, uh, you have uh, 15. 15. Very good. Okay. Yes. How much time? He told me three minutes. Oh, 
Okay, 15 anyway. Ah, oh, okay, very good. Okay. Uh, uh, so I have more time to elaborate on my conclusions, <laughs> which of, uh, is of course the purpose of this uh, uh, talk. Okay. Uh, so, how to solve the global warming uh, problem? I think the first step should be more study on the evaluation of damages, and these results should be annually published. Now, why do I say this? When Congressman Malachan uh, uh, used a political tactic to divert the efforts of the uh, Commerce Department in the United States towards a study. Okay. He doesn't want to say, I oppose green accounting. He will say, well, it needs further study. <laughs> so the commission was uh, organized, and the book was published, The Nature's Numbers, as I just said. Do you know how much impact that book on the U.S. public Zero? Well, from my search of literature in economics, it was like a big bang. I mean, in, I, I don't know about the public, but in, in the economics profession, that nature's numbers became a big bang in, in the U.S. Uh, economic society. Numerous publications follow that book and all argue for a reform in the accounting practices. Okay. So, uh, uh, of course, I admit, uh, uh, I think Professor Rex would agree with me uh, that uh, we cannot just uh, uh, talk to the peers in the same discipline. We have to reach the public. Okay. That's why we. We arranged a TV interview for you <laughs> uh, to, to educate the general public in Taiwan. Uh, but at least it, it's, a, it's a very good start. Okay. Now, uh, 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 presidential candidate Gore did a great job in showing the movie. Okay, to alert people that global warming is not a myth or a distant threat. It's, it's, it's happening around us. Okay. But a film is a film. This is different. This is like the Green Academy in Taiwan. It will have an accurate account of damages happening every year, in every corner of the world. Okay. I think the United Nations should do this. Okay. Even without the uh, uh, Kyoto Core or anything like that, okay? because that's hard to reach. Let's at least first record the damage, the numbers. Okay. And the numbers will talk. And every year, there are new set of numbers that people can talk about. Every time when the publication is released, there could be talk shows <laughs> on TV. There could be seminars like this one, forums. So let's talk about damage actually uh, incurred upon us by global warming, which is, of course, is, uh, as I have consulted organizers of well, this meeting, they're more knowledgeable about global, global warming than I, I am. Uh, they told me such studies already uh, exist, and there are many of them. Of course, there is still a long way to go to construct a full database, but uh, it should be annually published. Okay. Once this is done, it's relatively easier to calculate the cost of prevention. Okay, because it's an engineering problem. Okay, so if you have the benefits and uh, damage assessments, if you know the cost, you can calculate 
an optimal tax on carbon emission from a global perspective. Okay. So in other words, I will turn it off. <laughs> Time to. <laughs> Five more minutes. <laughs> so we will have an estimation of the global optimal tax on carbon emission. Okay. That itself will be a topic in the news. Okay. And people will start asking uh, when our country will start uh, uh, you know, implementing this uh, tax on uh, carbon. Because if it's implemented, then the damages to our economy would be reduced. And use these two publications, the results of these two publications, to mount political pressure on opposing sides in the leading economy. Okay. That's very important. After this is done, what remains to be done is to construct a system of cost sharing that is acceptable to major economies. Uh, now, uh, the Kyoto Protocol has done already a lot uh, in that direction. We have the uh, all kinds of system, uh, so the cost of minimizing can be, uh, the cost of uh, uh, reduction in emission can be minimized. Okay. For example, if uh, it's easier you grow more trees in certain countries, okay, then to reduce the emission in other countries, then the two can trade, okay. So, uh, uh, in the end, the, the cost of payment is minimized. Okay? So, it shouldn't be too hard. Uh, besides, uh, abatement involves new technologies and it's in the interests of all the major economies invest uh, to or to encourage investment in uh, research and development in, in these areas. Uh, a lot has been done already, but uh, lots more needs to be done. So I think all these four steps are important. The attitude of the U.S. is public. And I think it best concurrent with the renewal of green national accounting uh, efforts. Uh, this would be easier uh, if the U.S. economy truly recovers from the, uh, the Eurozone uh, crisis. Uh, and we think it's, it will be there. Maybe next, not this year, but uh, next year or two years from now. And uh, I don't know about the attitude of President Obama, uh, but I do hope that all the, uh, uh, the, the strong endorsement from the uh, U.S. Uh, uh, academic uh, community uh, could be heard, and uh, with the, uh, the coming of the new congress congressman, as I said, from uh, West Virginia, uh, I hope the Green National Accounting efforts will be renewed in the United States. And that is the best time to do this because it would be very easy politically to persuade the Bureau of Economic Analysis that in the construction of the U.S. Green Accounting include not only the country or area specific pollutants, but also carbon dioxide, which affects the world, including the United States.
himself, he would be forced to do a study of benefits and costs. <coughs> that concludes my talk. Thank you very much.